This is Jonah Dempsey and I'm in Ibiza and I'm going to continue with our Elements of Compatibility series talking about line and reactivity. So one thing I love about this analysis of relationships that we've really looked at in terms of relationship compatibility, looking at the tone, color, line, and this is something that really Steve Rhodes deserves the credit for. Uh, he calls himself the relationship wizard and it, it's true, he is. If you think about why people break up so often, it is actually because of these three areas. And so I think any understanding that we can have in these areas can really help us in our relationships. The three areas are mood, the, the moods people fall into, resilience, people being too much or too little resilient, right? Like just get over it already versus you don't care. That would be the, 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 the opposite, right? You care too much or you don't care enough. And then lines, reactivity. Can you just not be so reactive? And just the reactivity of somebody who's either very unreactive, who seems indifferent and uncaring, or someone who seems overly reactive, hyper-reactive. So, you know, again, it's this too much, too little. It's this kind of Goldilocks problem. For the not-self, courage is never right. When you're really living your design as your true self, you get to accept the porridge at exactly the temperature it is. You get to accept the reactivity exactly like it is, your own reactivity and those of others. You get to accept the resilience exactly where it is, your own resilience and the resilience of others. You get to accept what drives you at that deep tonal architecture place of your cognition and of your sense of what is sort of the driving force um, for you, wh wh whether it's splenic, whether it's ajna, or whether it's solar plexus. Okay, so looking at the level of lines, reactivity, I mean, this is such an interesting way of looking at it. As I was saying before, using the keywords uh, lines one and two, reactive, three and four, opportunistic, five and six, initiating. And of course, there's the complexities of, well, if manifestors are here to initiate, none of the other types are here to initiate then what is it to have a profile where you're initiating, right? And, what, and how do we understand the profile role of initiating versus the aura mechanic of initiating? And, you know, that's something I kind of went into briefly, I touched on in the last video, but really the idea, you know, this is going to be something you're going to have to explore for yourself, but the idea here is reactivity. So if you're a 1-3 manifester or a 5-1 generator, these are sort of like interesting mismatches almost. Like Ra was a 5-1 manifester, makes sense, right? His aura is initiating and he has the energy to initiate and his role is to initiate. So when he's clear about what he's here to initiate, his aura mechanics back that up and help him fulfill that life purpose of initiating. That's how, that's how he fulfills his role through profile, which is also to say through incarnation cross. You can't look at incarnation cross without looking at profile. They're one and the same thing. People think there are 12 profiles. Actually, there are 768, each combination of profile and uh, incarnation cross. When we're looking at lines through the lens of reactivity, this is saying that our purpose in the world is fulfilled either by being reactive, by being opportunistic, or by initiating something, by starting something, part of that role in the world. I'm here to fulfill my purpose through initiating. I'm a 5-1. And yet my aura mechanic is to never initiate, I'm a generator, an undefined throat. Well, how does that look for me compared to Ra, 5-1 manifester? Well, for me, I might see my role to start something, but then I have to wait for the energy to align. It's like waiting for the stars to align, waiting for something to respond to that then gives, it makes the energy available. I won't even say gives me the energy, but allows the energy that's within me to be available for that project to help fulfill my purpose in the world. So profile, incarnation cross, this is purpose. This is what role you play in, in the sort of greater collective in the totality. Part of my purpose as a fifth line is to universalize the totality. This is initiating something new into the Maya, getting something new into the collective. It's very hard to do getting it a Wikipedia page, getting it a following, getting it, um, you know, making it available in the collective. And, uh, and that's my role, that's my purpose. And yet I don't have the energy to do that through initiating the way that a manifester would, right? I, I don't, I'm not able to sort of just inaugurate something into the Maya, meeting the resistance and pushing it out of the way. I instead gravitationally pull things to me which then I can respond to, and I'm sort of waiting, poised, lying in wait, waiting to respond. 
So you end up with all sorts of interesting things here when you look at the combination of profiles with the combination of lines. And so ask yourself, you know, what is your type? What is your strategy? If you're here to respond, if you're here to inform, if you're here to wait for the invitation, if you're here to wait a lunar cycle, and then look at how you reconcile that with your profile. And that's a really interesting key for understanding line and profile through the lens of reactivity. Now, uh, in the next one, maybe we'll look at some of the differences of the Sun Earth versus the nodes, because again, we're looking at this in the context of relationships, elements of relationship compatibility. Well, it's not that certain Sun Earths are compatible with other Sun Earths. It's compatibility is really through the nodes. That's what you're looking for in the other. And as I've said in previous videos, compatibility, to quote Steve Rhodes, is just how long you can spend with someone until you need a break. Right? That's just how long you can spend with them. It doesn't mean you're, it's right for you to be together or not. Right? So looking at the Sun Earths, you know, I'm a 5-1. It does not mean I'm compatible with other 5-1s and 5-2s and 6-2s. It doesn't. It means that they're all, like me, a combination of initiating and reacting. They have an initiating personality and a reacting design. They have a very unreactive personality and a very highly reactive design. Right? All 5-1s. Uh, five twos and six twos share this quality, but my nodes are third line on each side. So I'm actually drawn to third and fourth lines. So I'm actually not as drawn to five ones, five twos and six twos. Now, again, this doesn't mean that I won't have a lot of friends like me, unreactive personality, reactive design. It doesn't mean that. What it really means is that I'm drawn to people who carry a third or fourth line. It really, it puts me like, I want to spend a lot of time with people who are deeply connected to the material. I want to spend a lot of time with people that are connected to the fourth lines. It's funny, I only, I only have one fourth line in my chart, and yet I'm, like, very connected to the fourth line because my nodes are third line. Now, in conventional human design nodal analysis, you look at the transference, so you would look at the third line and the sixth line together, saying that I would have a connection to third and sixth line because I have third line nodes. But what I'm saying is the binary here is actually very important, that I have a connection to third and fourth lines. Now, it also means that I can pretty much understand, I don't have any, any lines not represented in some way. I can understand other 5-1s, 5-2s, and 6-2s, because like myself, as a 5-1, they have an unreactive personality, an initiating personality, with a reactive design. So I can understand that and sort of relate to it, because that's me. But then, because of my nodes, I'm really drawn to people that are medium reactivity. Really, I'm drawn to opportunistic people. And uh, it's the opportunists with the third and fourth line. In conventional you know, approaches, we see the fourth line as the opportunist. We don't usually call a third line an opportunist. And yet, this is another interesting aspect of Steve Rhodes' analysis here, is that the third line is also opportunistic. It's just on the reactive side of opportunism. So it's the reactive opportunist, whereas the fourth line is the initiating, unreactive opportunist, sort of lying in wait to pounce. All right. Interesting stuff. I'm going to follow up with more on the lines, and we'll be looking at it in terms of relationships and line combinations of Sun, Earth, and nodes coming right up. Thanks for watching.